You're browsing Twitter.com, and suddenly you're bombarded with fan art of space lesbians, and you start to ask yourself, what the heck is going on? Is it possible that you're viewing fan art of the hit indie game Signalis from small indie developer Rose Engine? It's more likely than you think! Now, as you begin researching this video game, you may notice people saying that the game is very scary, very sad, and very cryptic. But mostly sad. Well, you're not gonna believe this, but Signalis isn't actually that sad, scary, or confusing when you really get down to it. Our research and development team here at Mirabeau Studios has spent the past two seconds engineering the perfect summary of this wonderful game, allowing for your viewing experience to be as digestible and well-informed as possible. So get your Signalis-themed popcorn out of the microwave and Signalis-themed carbonated beverages out of the freezer before the explosion, because we're out of the down to outer space! In Signalis, you play as Signalis, the one and only Jane Signalis. She is an android who had previously been on a government-funded space expedition with her beloved wife, Audrey Signalis. They've been living an idyllic life, cruising the stellar seas for some time. But recently, they got into a... marital dispute. Jane woke up the next day feeling really bad, though, and went to find Audrey so she could apologize to her, because she loves her very much. To her surprise, however, Audrey was nowhere to be seen, and they had crash-landed on a remote planet. Now, Jane must embark on a new adventure in a strange land to find her wife and make it up to her. During her quest, Jane meets some peculiar oddities. These may seem like shambling corpses to the average survival horror gamer, but in reality, these folks are androids much like Jane, and they watch Signalis video essays on YouTube that made them very sad. Before she gets much further, Jane has a chance encounter with Lisa, a regular human who's just around. She's pretty chill. Hey buddy, things are getting pretty crazy out there, and I can tell you're going through a lot. If there's anything you need, I'm here for you. Oh, I'm good. I'm just looking for my wife. Ah, your wife. Well, to get to her, you'll need to find the Puzzle Master. He's blocked the path to his lair with various puzzles and riddles that only you can solve. Puzzles? Y yeah he... he makes... puzzles. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So, in order to solve the puzzles of the future, we must first look to the puzzles of the past. Back in the 90s, two groups of people were punching each other in the face. The Yuzhan Empire and the Yuzhan Nation. They're fighting over who gets to keep the name, it's very high stakes stuff. The Nation is in it for the long haul, so they're on total lockdown. Meaning no funny business, no rule breaking, and certainly no carrying more than six items at once. Now, this last one is pretty problematic, because over at S23 Serpinski, they're supposed to be mining a lot of stuff. And how are you supposed to mine all that stuff if you can only carry six stuffs at once? It's dumb! This was a problem for the security chief at the facility, Felicia, so she went into the mines looking for answers and came out really sad. Albert, the administrator of the facility, was worried about Felicia and wanted to cheer her up so he spent his time carefully crafting wacky puzzles for her to solve, hoping she'd find the experience soothing for the soul. What he didn't anticipate after handing Felicia the first puzzle, though, was that she'd just fall asleep. At a loss for what to do next, Albert just kept making puzzles. He got so good at making puzzles that people started calling him the Puzzle Master. With that in mind, Jane had the tools she needed to solve all the puzzles. Aha! I see you've solved all my puzzles. What would you ask of me, Traveler? Have you seen my wife? <laughs> I may be able to point you in the right direction, but first you must solve one more puzzle. Okay, what's the puzzle? Gravity. Shit, for real? After solving the gravity puzzle using Shadow Clone Jutsu, Jane ventures forth to confront the rest of the Puzzle Master's backup puzzles, because the man is nothing if not committed. No, 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 this is not how you're supposed to solve the puzzle! I understand. I don't care if you understand. I am the puzzle! 
clutch and the puzzle coach knows best. Now, the fuse is exposed. Flip the three and a sixty switch. Do the flip the... That was a lucky guess. But next time, listen to the coach. What are you doing? Do not hang up this call. Do not hang up this call. But wait, you may be asking why Audrey looks so different in the photo. I mean, that's a brunette lady and Audrey has white hair. What's going on? Okay, hold on. Just, we'll get to that in a bit. Just, just hold on to this picture of Ryan Gosling for now, okay? It'll make sense, trust me. For now, however, a confrontation separate from Jane's quest is happening that sets the scene for even higher stakes. Bro, did you fucking spoil my puzzles for Jane? Huh, what? Do you have any idea how hard I worked on those? Uh, well, I only told her that you had puzzles. It's not like I knew what the solutions were. She solved the fucking gravity puzzle in two seconds. How do you gravity... explain that? You have a gravity puzzle? How does that even work? I push her down the fucking elevator shaft, and the puzzle is supposed to- Shh! Felicia is asleep! Jane needs to be very quiet if she wants to snoop around and take a look at her diary, which details how something under the mines made her inherit memories that are not hers, and it's freaking her out. Still, though, we don't want to wake her up with any loud noise. Jane, what are you doing? Turn it off! Why would you do that? Oh, hey, it worked. I see. So that's what the signal is. Now, why would Albert go out of his way to hide this key? Which leads to another key! 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 Which leads to another secret lair? Such a puzzling man. Okay. Look, I will concede that you are really good at solving puzzles on your own. I mean, hell, the chasing you across the facility with a hunting rifle puzzle was something I just came up with on the fly, and you were managing quite well, so maybe... Like, we can team up and make some more puzzles and shit, right? Sure is an honor to be praised by Serpinski's puzzle master, but I'll pass. You're really not giving me much to work with here. Fuck! Listen, I gave- After breaking into Albert's puzzle cove, TM, solving one last puzzle and taking the keys to the downstairs elevator, Jane makes a startling discovery. There's nothing down here. Well, not nothing exactly. Let's see, we got- Amanda, Stacy and Julie, they're just chilling out here. They seem a bit sad, though. Was it the video essays again? Or was it the really sharp wires all around? Dude, that's the Akira elevator. Perhaps this is a Half-Life reference. Hold. Upon jumping through the hole, Jane has a That's So Raven vision that takes her to... Huh. Not gonna lie, this is getting a bit wacky. Oh. 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 And here we are! As it turns out, what lies below the mines is a facility imported directly from Silent Hill as part of a merger between Sierpinski and the Konami HQ that was two blocks down the street. Along with the imported facility came world-famous Silent Hill protagonist, Kiefer Sutherland. Hey, Kiefer, you're in Signalis, man. That would explain everything. Come on. <laughs> While Mr. Sutherland is busy with that, Jane jumps into yet another hole to find Lisa stuck between a rock and a hard place. Hey, buddy. Seems like I kicked the hornet's nest. Or rather, the hornet's arms, because, <laughs> you know, it's a lot of... Please help. Okay. So did you have a plan or...? I won't miss. Didn't know she was chill like that. Gasp! Lisa chilled out so hard that she took a nap! But we gotta wake her up! Luckily, Jane can utilize the ungodly power of bath salts, available at your local Bed Bath and beyond. <sighs> I'm beat, buddy. But we're not out of the woods yet. You still got one last puzzle to solve. You mean these hexagons and rings I've been collecting? Yeah, you gotta... Um, you gotta put them in the... the slots. And the hands. How is that a puzzle? Did he stop trying? Burnout is a health issue of serious concern in our industry, buddy. 
Okay, yeah, you get the drill by now. Collect the things, put them in the things, and finally, 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 the end of Jane's journey is in sight. Ever watch Groundhog Day, Mrs. Signalis? It's a film released in 1993 where Bill Murray keeps reliving the same day over and over and over again. Do you... Do you ever feel like Bill Murray, Mrs. Signalis? What's a groundhog? <laughs> <laughs> With the puzzle master finally out puzzled, Jane crosses the Scarlet Dunes. With every step comes a mounting pressure. Faces shifting in and out of the blind spots in her consciousness, pain splitting through her chest, words calling out to her, moving her legs for her. The vessel that housed years of loving memories lay before her. Audrey is in there. Okay, so you deserve a proper explanation, dear viewer. It turns out that things are not as clear-cut as they may seem. Let's get down to brass tacks. Jane and Audrey Signalis are a married couple. This much is true. But there's something special about Audrey. She's actually what the hip young kids call bioresonant, which is shorthand for phenomenal cosmic powers that lie waiting beneath the subconscious. As a bioresonant, you can basically make your wildest dreams come true by altering reality as you see fit. Audrey doesn't have many big aspirations, though. She's just as happy living out her days with her loving wife, Jane, aboard their quaint little government-funded spaceship. Except the government that was funding said spaceship, the Yuzhan Nation, had a different perception of space expeditions. See, the Penrose program was actually just a publicity stunt where they'd shoot a bunch of ships into space to show everyone that they're exploring past the solar system and all that. Folks aboard those ships weren't actually expected to find any planets out there. Instead, they were tasked with the solemn duty of just dying in their big metal coffins. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why did they need people in these ships in the first place? And to that I say... Uh... uh sir? I had a few questions about the, uh, Penrose program. Ah, uh, yes. What's on your mind, comrade? Yeah, so, uh, these ships were launching past the Oort Cloud. They're just for show, right? Yes. We're not actually expecting them to find habitable planets anytime soon. This is purely a propaganda move. Correct. Right. So, that would mean that we wouldn't need living personnel aboard these ships to take care of them. Because no one would ever see anything past the outside of the ships. We could just as well be shooting chunks of metal shaped like ships out there to show we mean business, right? Absolutely. Because that would be a completely irresponsible waste of resources, right? I mean, for all we know, there could be a bioresonant compatible person in the program, and we'd inadvertently be sending them to their deaths. And that wouldn't be strategically sound in any capacity. No disagreements here. Then why are we putting people in these ships? Because we need them! Okay, but why? Because lesbians killed my grandma, okay? How did lesbians kill your fucking grandma? Oh. Me, I was a lesbian the whole time! What? No! You're gonna die! No, you can't do this! So needless to say, Audrey didn't take this revelation very well. As time went on, their ship's engine started leaking bad stuff. She got sick. Jane got sick. And Jane got the idea to put Audrey in a cryopod until they landed somewhere safe. This didn't work out because Audrey was still sick in the cryopod. And Jane died. Fuck! 
But you know how Jane is an android, or more specifically, a replica? This is where Audrey's bioresonance kicks in. Turns out, bioresonant people can just replicate replicas. Crazy, right? So, Audrey's in her cryopod, dying from space illness. Meanwhile, her subconscious is going into overdrive, warping reality around her, teleporting them under a mining facility, showing everyone Signalis video essays on YouTube, bringing Jane back over and over and over again. Hey, you still got that Ryan Gosling picture? Yeah, thanks. So, basically, she saw this one girl and was like, literally me. So she rewrote herself all over the place. That, yeah, that's all that was. Uh, all this to say, Audrey's dying mind is physically fabricating a scenario where Jane can finally remember her promise and put Audrey out of her misery. And that's pretty messed up. But Jane is a good wife, the best wife even. She loves Audrey. And if going through the depths of hell to end her suffering can finally bring her peace, she'll do it. One last hole. What the shit? I've been waiting for you, Shannon. The stench of sin is unmistakable. I know you're here. Though I have failed to expunge you from this world before, once is enough. Today, you face retribution for all that you've done to us. Done to me. Today, I will end you are not my machine. Have you seen my wife? Uh, I, uh, what the fuck? Uh, have you seen a blue machine? No. Then where is I don't think this is all there, you be one. Hi, are you okay? Where's Elster? It hurts. It hurts so much. I can't do this anymore. I want it to end. Are you hungry? I could help you now if you want. My teeth hurt. How about soup? We just came back from who's already shopping. Nothing solid, right? No, no, nothing solid. This would be spring onion soup. I like that. It's good for your health as well. Oh, really? Hello, yes. There seems to have been a mix-up. Uh, this person is yours, correct? What was her name again? Jane? Sunglasses? Whatever. Yeah, see, she wound up in my territory, and I can only assume that the machine that I'm looking for, this blue GoPro fucker, uh, has been spotted running around here too. Uh, would you happen to have seen anything of that description? Jane, down there in the mines, I figured it out. Those memories, they, they showed me the truth. The truth of Felicia Signalis. They showed me how to carry more than six items at once. Okay, that answered none of my questions. What is she talking about? I think she's talking about the Rule of Six. Like the Mark of the Beast? That's kind of fucked up. You know, those monster energy drinks do the same thing with their logo. That's why I don't drink those. I understand. And it's only when Bill Murray uses his knowledge of the time loop for the benefit of others instead of himself that he is able to break out of the curse. Will you be Bill Murray at the end of the movie, willing to stop this loop for the sake of us all? Or will you be Bill Murray at the start of the movie and damn us for all eternity? Why didn't Bill Murray just talk to the groundhog about it? Is he stupid? A puzzle for the ages. I'll chase the clouds from over Rubicon. Only I can fly high enough! Oh, great heaven! Are you... Machine! You will delay this!
It's no longer. We still have a score to set up. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh my god, that's actually Miku. Hello, Yuriya. She knows my name. We want to be a robot too. Have you used your healing power to help my friend feel better? Miku, I... I lost my connection to the light. I... I don't think I could cure her. Don't worry, Yuriya. I believe in you. If you believe in yourself, you can do anything. The power of Christ compels you. It's divine! How did you do this? I can show you the recipe, but you have to keep in mind the most important ingredient. Wow! The truly the language of God. And so, with Audrey's space illness cured and order restored to the solar system, the last puzzle of Signalis was solved. Leaving me with the perfect opening. Something dark is coming. You know they both die in the end, right? You, you, you could, that was completely made up. You made that up. You just lied to, to everyone. You lied to me. <laughs>